Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, participants, session chairs, and keynote speaker. Welcome to the International Conference on Science and Contemporary Technology 2021, organized by Bangladesh University of Business and Technology. I, Dr. Mohammad Shamsul Arifin, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, and the coordinator of the session on robust whole work control in power distribution. Initially, I'd like to introduce our honorable session chairs, Professor Dr. Sheikh Anwarul Fatta and Dr. Shajal Kumar Dash. Professor Fatta received his postdoc from Princeton University, USA, and PhD from Concordia University, Canada. Currently, he is working as a professor of electrical and electronic engineering, Bangladesh University of Engineering Technology, Bangladesh. His research focus includes robotics and artificial intelligence, biomedical engineering, signal processing, and smart grid. Now, introducing our another session chair, Dr. Shajal Kumar Dash. Dr. Dash obtained his PhD from University of New South Wales, Australia. Currently, he is working as an assistant professor and head of the Department of Mechatronics Engineering, Russia University of Engineering Technology, Bangladesh. His research focus includes renewable energy generation and control, microgrid, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and nano positioning control. Now, I'd like to request our honorable session chairs to conduct the session. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shamsul Arifin. Uh, it's been a very successful conference, I should say, uh, the, with a lot of distinguished keynote talks and very nice presentations by the authors. And today, we have here with us Dr. Bikash Pal. Professor Bikash Pal is a very, very renowned professor in the area of power energy. And we are blessed to have him with us as a keynote speaker. So uh, let me first introduce Professor Bikash Pal. And if I have to say all his uh, activities and achievements, I may need a full day, but still a uh, few things that I'll be reading from his biography. Professor Bikash Pal is a professor of power systems at Imperial College London. He is research active in power system stability, control and estimation. Currently, is a leading, uh, he is leading a six university UK China research consortium on resilient operation of sustainable energy systems as part of EPSRC and NSFC program on sustainable energy supply. He led UK China Research Consortium project on power network stability with grid scale storage. He also led an eight university UK India research consortium project on smart grid stability and control. His research is conducted in strategic partnership with ABB, G Grid Solutions, UK and National Grid UK, UK Power Networks, G Commission, and sequel of projects with grid interaction problems. Professor Pal was the chief technical consultant for a panel of experts appointed by the UNFCCC, CDM, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Clean Development Mechanism. He has offered trainings in Chile, Qatar, UAE, Malaysia, and India in power system protection, stability, and control topics. He has developed and validated a prize-winning 68 bus power system model, which now forms a part of IEEE benchmark systems as a standard for research, researchers to validate their innovations in stability analysis and control design. He was the editor-in-chief of IEEE transactions on sustainable energy during 2012 to 2017 and Editor-in-Chief of IET Generation Transmission and Distribution during 2005 to 2012. He is Vice President, IEEE Power and Energy Study Publications since 2019. In 2016, his research team won the President's Outstanding Research Team Award at Imperial College London. He is Fellow of IEEE for his contribution to power system stability and control. He is an IEEE Distinguished Lecturer in Power Distribution System Estimation and Control. He has published about 100 papers in IEEE Transactions and IT Journals 
and authored four books in power system modeling, dynamics, estimations, and control. Two of his papers in power system stability and control topics have received annual Best Journal Paper Award. He was Otto Monstedt Professor at Denmark Technical University in 2019 and Marketer Professor sponsored by German Research Foundation at University of Duisburg Essen in 2011. He worked as faculty at IIT Kanpur, India. He holds a visiting professorship at Tsinghua University, China. So it's now time for Professor Bikash Pal for a keynote session. So I welcome Professor Bikash Pal. The floor is now yours. Thank you, uh, Professor Pata, for your nice and kind and long introductions. So I can now share my slide uh, screen, right? Are you able to see um, something? Yes. Yes. Right. This is the bold bar control in power distribution systems. That's the slide, right? Exactly. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure always to speak uh, before this type of uh, conference where there is plenty of interest for technical activities, and especially if it is organized by, by ITPD Region 10, specifically Bangladesh, usually I don't have any uh, kind of problem even to speak on Sunday or Saturday. Uh, I know FATA for a number of years, uh, what I actually admire, actually, his enthusiasm and a sense of uh, kind of global uh, citizenships uh, in engineering. So let's uh, start with this. This is normally I um, deliver as part of our DLP series, uh, Distinguished Lecture Program Series, but because this is on the conference, so this is fine to have this keynote. This is really going to be technically very, very uh, you know, uh, specific and only for some people who are working in power distribution system. So I would like to have my advance, uh, you know, apology for those who are not working in this area. So it might be a bit soporific to you. Right, the BBC uh, problem. So, right, this one. We are going to have this talk on a couple of aspects. Mainly, it would be chance constant volvar control. I'll talk to you about chance constant problem uh, applied to volvar control statement and current challenges. And then convexification of the power flow model. And then I will go with, uh, because we're talking about chance constraints, we need to generate lots of scenarios. And then lots means a lot, to be millions of scenarios. So how you enforce the scenario through an algorithm. And then there were two stage implementation, philosophy of the scenario enforcement algorithms uh, that would be followed by results, discussions, and conclusions. Now, before I say what is this terms control, let me tell you a little bit about the Boldvar control problem. What is it? The power distribution system now has a new technology uh, connected to it. That's the technology of new generations uh, from solar, wind, and other renewables. So the network is now having both generation, that part of the network now has both generation as well as the demand. So that has challenged us to operate the distribution systems within the specified criteria laid down in the grid operation code. Now, what are those criteria? They are the main objectives are, we must make sure that the voltages are maintained within the limits. Now, depending on the DNO, distribution network operator uh, code, it can be plus minus 
five percent, or it can be plus five percent, minus ten percent, or other around. So normally, 0.95 to 1.05 is the limit, is the range. So that is one uh, set constraint. Uh, these are actually inequality constraints in uh, power network. And then the lines or the cables will have their capacity depending on the season. So that capacity means the current, that, that current has to be within certain limit. So these two uh, main constraints are uh, inequality constraints. Uh, they are not actually power flow constraint. Power flow constraint is equality constraints. There are secondary objectives. In order to make sure that we abide by these two constraints under various, say, regime of renewable generations and demand, we also make sure that at every point we meet the power flow constraints. Secondary objective is in order to do this, we can then have other objective like the network will have about some ohmic loss. Now, depending on the design, uh, it can be varying from say four to ten percent. Typically, for a network which is having nearly one power unit uh, voltage within plus minus two percent, that loss can be about four percent. So if you think about that loss in a distribution network over the year, that's a huge amount of you know the megawatt hour that we lose. So minimizing that uh, even by five percent will have uh, you know a huge financial uh, benefit. We can also have minimization of the tap counts. Uh, some of the primary substations that you could see over here will have transformer with tap changing uh, mechanisms. So those taps should not actually move very fast throughout the day. You know, there, there can be a number of operations, but if we allow them to vary a lot, then that would lead to their life expectancies. So what are the control variables in our gold bar control uh, optimization problems? We will have switch sound capacitor uh, set points at different you know, point, we will have them. And also we'll have onload tap changing and voltage regulator set points. Added this would be the new uh, say source of reactive power. Uh, this is uh, the distributed generator uh, produced reactive power. The first two are mechanical, sun capacitors, sun switch, and then OLTC onload tap changing, that's a mechanical switch. Voltage regulator, mechanical switch. So those, those are the mechanical options, static options there. Uh, from the network. Now the new one is distributed generator, which is uh, again uh, through power electronic switch, so it is very fast and smooth. So then the challenge now, how you amalgamate or how you fuse this fast and slow. So that's the hint uh, about the uh, you know solving the problem. So the left hand side is what I said to you the yesterday's volt regulations, line drop compensations. Today that we need to embrace is the uh, solar panel. This will have, depending on the, uh, the availability of the irradiance, and even if it's for wind, availability of the wind speed, that P would vary. So then that would give us an opportunity to adjust this Q according to the variation of that P. And then that Q, then we could coordinate with this distribution transformer uh, um, here plus the fixed capacitor. So that means what is coming here now, a variable P, which is not in our hand, we could forecast it, but then there could be some uncertainty in the forecast or forecast error. So this control Q is now becoming, you know, kind of stochastic uh, sort of control. So that's how we are more moving towards from a deterministic uh, control regime to stochastic control regime. So this is how the idea about the chance constraint uh, comes in into this. The focus then is historically 
the PV and load forecast have been neglected. But in our sums constraint voltage control, we take them into consideration. The 1547 also now allows the voltage regulation from the DGs. So now the output of the DG, the voltage, the reactive power output is treated as ancillary service in many of the utilities. So that is what incorporates the DG reactive power support in the voltage regulations. So that is where we are uh, now and how we do it in an optimal way that we will do. So now I show you the uh, say optimization problem setup. Left hand side is the deterministic. What do you do? Your secondary objective was minimize power loss and also minimize step counts. Now, what are the constraints? I mentioned there is a equality constraints that is the power flow, nodal P and Q injections. And then there is an inequality constraints, which is 0.95 into less than V node in 1.05. That's the inequality constraint, that is voltage constraints, and this is the power flow constraints. And there are also the current. Uh, limit constraints that you saw that i must be less than is equal to the capacity yeah that means we should not violate the uh, the capacity limit of the feeders no forecast errors are considered in this so you are deterministic where in the chance constraints we now have a lot of scenarios so we are not doing on one particular case so we are doing for many many cases and then we are minimizing the expectation of that loss so power flow model is node phi but node q is now uncertain because you have seen that i showed to you that when the p from the dg is varying um, because of the weather uh, pattern so the q that we are adjusting will also vary and then there is the that means that would lead us to uh, different values of the voltage the power flow solutions will give us different value of the voltage magnitude and angle so that means we may have a range of voltage coming in. Now, whatever that range is, the probability that voltage range is within this envelope of 0.95 to 1.05, we must uh, make sure. And that probability cannot be 100%. Then, you know, it is difficult. Uh, so the probability that we are within this must be greater than one minus epsilon. Now, what is epsilon? Epsilon is actually the, uh, the confidence uh, limit. That you can set. Say I said that as 99% um, probability that we are not violating the voltage limit in this case for all operations. So that means in that case, epsilon has to be 0 0.01. Okay, so that will give you 0.99 uh, sort of probability. Forecast error, of course, has to be considered, but then we need to model the forecast error. Now, technical challenge. For chance constant VVC, uh, of course, minimize expectation of power loss, that is our objective. Power flow model is our constraints. But then what is the challenge in that constraints? It is non-convex. There is no guarantee of global optimum because you know power flow, uh, neutron absence or whatever way you model, there is a sinusoid of the angles and the voltage magnitude product between uh, two adjacent nodes. So that way it is non-linear and uh, non-convex. The probability of the voltage within that range is again a notion. That is what we want. That is our wish. But then, how we characterize that, you know, through uh, kind of um, exclusive ex exclusive uh, relationship is very difficult. So, how to compute this probability space, where we cannot characterize this space uh, in a mathematically tractable manner? How we do it? So. This side on the red box, these are the, the, uh, uh, the features of the challenge, uh, the technical challenge. Now, let's see how we address this. In order to address those challenges, let's try to understand the nature of the, you know, the uh, expressions. So basic, uh, the voltage drop expression in a branch is Vi minus Vj, Zij, Ij. That is basic Ohm's law. Uh, that's fine. The first year. Uh, electrical engineering. Now that we could do into this sort of transformations, Vji square, Vi square, this. I mean, if we just take the square and then 
break this j i j as r plus j x j uh, and then you will get this branch power flow is s i j is v i into i j conjugate that is say branch this is the branch between this v i uh, node i and node j that flow is v i into i i j square so this can be again uh, take the square of it and written as p i j square q square and i i j square into v i square so that itself we could see it's a quadratic in i and v but then again i and v they are also product here now node power balance is whatever comes to this that goes the continuity equations then if you arrange this here there is s j k that all the branch flow that is coming out minus the loss in this right here and the injection minus the loss that comes over here and some goes etc so that has to be equal to sj the net injection a nodal injection is sj this is what actually the power flow in power flow you do the nodal injection right and that is a complex so you break that into p and q and you get this one so there are now again ij square and this uh, that uh, is the uh, expression and there is a vhs curve so what i now do is so, yeah. what i what we could do now we need to convexify this pj i uh, in the previous slide i showed to you is like this here uh, ij square and vi square so let us define vi square as ui and ij square as lij then substitute them so the first two equations are now convexified with the newly defined variables and then the voltage that you saw in the in the previous slide you saw the v square is equal to that so that is uj is ui minus 2 rij this so this is also convexified so they they are now linear in pij qij lij ui but then this expression that uh, the branch flow pij square plus qij square is equal to that now if you do that there is still pij and qij which in this equation is still appearing as a square so it is still not linear i mean first three equations are definitely linear but this equation is not linear so in order to handle that we need to then relax this from equality to inequality now if you could relax this to inequality this becomes pij square plus qij square say less than equal to lij ui then we could uh, extract this or you could uh, formalize this as a second order cone uh, you could the, if you see that the, this is the equilibrium now we now expand this to the vector pij qij lij ui so think this as a vector and take the equilibrium norm and then you will get the relationship so keep this as inequality so that becomes actually a second order cone like this so the equality means you are on the surface of the cone now from any point of the surface of the cone to another point on the other side of the surface of the cone you cannot go without leaving the surface so that means still that is not convex so in order to you know uh, um, um, in order to um, say avoid that possibility like i am going from one point to another point in this cone so i have to enter through the interior part so if i include the interior part as part of my total say, um, uh, say space then it becomes a convex space so how i do that if i make this equality sign into inequality sign that's how the inequality means this is the whole cone so once we bring the inequality this now becomes a second order uh, cone and it's a convex constants clear that's the algebraic uh, the geometric uh, say interpretation to the inequality sign right you cannot go from one point of the surface of the cone to another side of this without leaving the surface uh, that's how you leave the convexity uh, so putting that inequality that means you are guaranteeing the convexity next is oh. why it is not moving is down yes yeah. right so now 
uh, there is a issue here. So what you see there also, I said this QJ. Now, what is this QJ? QJ, if you again look back, phase up, in this QJ here, SJ is PJ plus QJ. So you would have the nodal injection. And in that nodal injection, what do you have? You have your fixed capacitor, sun capacitor, right? So that sun capacitor is again a bank of capacitors, right? The bank of capacitor means you can only choose one bank at one point of time. So there's a discrete. So that means within that QJ, even though that has become a linear and convex uh, linear variable, QJ has now become a uh, you know a variable which is discrete. You know that product of continuous and this. I mean, uh, it's a discrete because depending on what capacitor bank position I am sitting in, my value of that QJ would now change. It is not a continuous sort of variable. So that means again solving that uh, you know the the um, convex problem by um, quadratic convex uh, optimizations and so on, it is difficult. That means we are bringing in actually mixed integer uh, variables. So that can be again handled by a big N method. So what is this? Like this is your UJ and this is BCJ. BCJ is the susceptance of the capacitor bank unit. Depending on which unit you are choosing, you will have this discrete variable. So that let's define that with a new quantity called ZJKUJ, which is WJ. So this means ZJK, sum of that is one to one means, suppose we have say N uh, for the Jth node capacitor bank. So we've got N sort of uh, say discrete points. So that sum of these has to be one. That means at any point of time, you will have only one connected or a couple of uh, you know, bank connected. So this is how ZJ, ZJ2, ZJ1, these are the describing variable uh, coefficients. So this sum has to be one. And this ZJK is a binary actually variable. If this is either zero or one, means either it, that bank is included with the uh, network or that, uh, or that uh, you know, the bank is not included or, or that value is not included. So this now becomes a new variable BCJ WJK. So this is again um, this. So what does big game method do? Big game method like when a particular, what is big game? They choose M as infinity. So when you do that, this becomes this minus infinity less than WJ is UJ this infinity. So infinity minus infinity is less than WJ is less than plus infinity. That means WJ is always, you know, that is satisfied. Now, when that M, when M is normally high, so that's how it satisfies this. But when we have ZJK is equal to one and ZJK equal to zero, so those two conditions we can now uh, validate. If ZJK one, your UJ is equal to WJ, that's what it is here. And if ZJK is equal to zero, when it means that capacitor bank is not included in the optimization uh, formulations, so that ZJK zero means no matter how big M is this, WJ would be zero. So this is how uh, you know we transfer that QJK at uh, that QJ into this sort of additional sort of inequality and put them into the uh, set of inequality and then the programs becomes uh, tractable. Now, next slide. Still we have the difficult part that how we find the probability of the node voltage staying in the range uh, of one minus epsilon. What is the probability distribution function of the V node? We really do not know. But a relatively easier option would be probability distribution of the PV forecast uh, errors. Because uh, I think uh, the powers, uh, which slide you are now showing? The slide heading? Uh, security constant probabil probabilities. But uh, here it is branch flow model. Yeah, there is a, uh, okay, there is an issue here. Uh, I don't know why this is moving fast and that is, I only don't know. I got two screen and I got two screen has got two slides. So what shall I do now? 
branch flow model convexified yeah I which we that. were explaining before yeah okay now okay now if i do is it okay okay that uh, this okay next this a method yeah big big m method right big m method that bcj and are you able to see the full slide no it's coming one by one okay the coming okay i got it now uh, coming one by one so this bc that i have already explained i think yeah right? yeah yeah that i explained okay let so let me then go up this like when jjk is one and then this 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 is this now it is okay right yes right i think i need to keep the mouse on the second screen then it's fine so this uh, the difficult bit is uh, that so but you know the the voltage violation uh, uh, the value of the node voltage that you are get, getting it is essentially being influenced by the amount of the injection of the um, real power from the photovoltaic plants or wind plant so that means that injection has the impact on the voltage now we do not know the um, the value of that injections with certainty but we know the we can forecast it and we also have an idea about the forecast error so that means the forecast error has correlation with the probability of this voltage which staying in the range so now if we focus on that forecast error so that is uh, pda of the pv forecast error from the historical data then we could uh, you know address this indirectly so now to do that of course we are talking about probability of uh, you know the whole uh, scenarios so let's let's see that how many scenarios we could do the probability space uh, is essentially a scenario uh, based approach so number of reformulation needed is will would be the uh, the thing that we need to focus on say you got to say you, you need a number of reformulation of n that n is related to the number of variables uh, the control variables that you have so in the control variables we have uh, the continuous as well as the binary b so that means that b and then c uh, it this gives you that um, uh, that expression gives you the number of scenarios that you need for that probability um, relationship uh, to hold with that 1 minus epsilon and also that there is a confidence parameter that what is your confidence in saying that is lambda that lambda is 10 to the power minus is a confidence parameter and epsilon is the robustness parameter so on load tap changing transformer capacitors and qdg satisfies all the scenarios with 1 minus gamma confidence that is if you choose gamma as 10 to the power minus 6 so it would be 0.9999 like 59 that confident that i am 99.99% confident and level of robustness is epsilon that you could again choose between 0.1 to 0.01 so these are the two parameters epsilon and gamma that you could decide and more and more you decide like gamma as very small value and also uh, epsilon as very small value you would need actually more number of scenarios for a given a continuous and binary variable continuous variables is of course q here and binaries are uh, wltc and capacitor right so then um, we, we have uh, the tap count yeah this is this is a problem i don't know i mean when i have within one slide couple of this so my second screen moves like this yeah i have i have spoken all these things looking at my left hand slide <laughs> but i have seen this yeah okay fine let me do sorry the reformulations satisfy the scenarios this is the confidence parameters and so on now the tap count minimizes and there are two objectives remember i told you the loss minimization and then also the uh, uh, the tap minimizations so this is minimize the expectation of the power loss and then also tap new and tap old what does tap old means you are at a particular during your base case you are at a particular tap positions now from there you are going to go to a 
uh, new trapezium. So that, you know, the deviation, I mean, movement from one tap to another tap, that it can be in either directions. Either you can tap down or tap up. So that's why I'm taking actually this as, uh, you know, that uh, the absolute value of that. And we could put weight that how much we could allow for the tap to uh, move and how frequent and how much you could then um, prioritize the expectation of power loss. So this is now a multi objective, one on the loss, another on the uh, absolute uh, uh, deviation of the tap. Uh, this can be again, because on the right hand side, uh, on the, the second part of this objective function in red, you got an uh, absolute value. So handling that is uh, easy if we do epigraph programming, that is minimize weighted value of the expectation of the loss and then weighted value of T. And how we found T, we define T as minus T, tap new minus tap old is less than equal to T. So this is how we do, and T is always greater than zero because this is an absolute value is always be going to get up than zero. So this is how we could define again our T here, this, this absolute thing through epigraph programming, we could do this. Now it is up to you that what is the priority of your expectation of the loss and what is the priority that you want to, don't, you don't want to endanger the life expectancy of the tap. And they are minus, we, we could actually put a limit of minus T to capital T, uh, a plus T, and this can be typically say um, uh, the tap uh, with uh, point, um, it is uh, it's about 10% of the total voltage range. And there are about 32 uh, or 33 positions, including one in the best, uh, the, the normal position zero, and this side 15, the other side 15 or, or 16. And this is 0 0.000625. So each of the positions. And then that way you could see that whether you are going to go for all 30 taps, minus 15 to plus 15. Sorry, I keep on making this mistake. Minus 16 to plus 16, or you want to go from minus eight to plus eight, because it is always better not to touch the end region of this. So always put the voltage, uh, you know, kind of control uh, options uh, within the say middle, range of the tap position. Don't actually go towards the end of the limit. And if any uh, kind of contingency comes and if the tap hits the limit, either way, then you lose the controllability from the tap. So best thing is to choose say eight uh, positions from the positive side and maybe eight positions from the negative side and then the best case. So that's how you could decide your T. Next is, let me put the mouse here, yes. Now the other of the what is that the the, uh, the demands if the demands are of constant sort of uh, impedance type and constant power type then what happens constant impedance means it is uh, square of the voltage uh, that is the, uh, the the expression for the demand now square of the voltage we have already defined as a, a new variable u j so that is linear. Now constant power, it is not function of voltage at, at all. So that's a constant, so that's not a problem. But if you have a constant current, then that is, which is just function of voltage. So then um, in our new definition, it would be square root of that new variable. So then again, we are, uh, you know, uh, losing the convexity. So then how you deal with the constant current type of load, uh, there are uh, way actually to handle that. I'm not covering it here, but we already work on that and we published some uh, work. You could do by, by you know, this, uh, uh, there is a kind of a portion, half of it to our, as a constant impedance and half of it as a constant power. And that gives you, uh, you know, a good results. And also that can be done for both uh, the JEEP model as well as the exponential model. Uh, and there are uh, many, uh, you know, way to do that. Uh, so. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, get into that, but treating the constant current, uh, constant current type of demand in this convex setup uh, is possible by transforming them into, uh, allocating them into constant power and constant uh, current, uh, constant impedance. Forecast error of the loads, we have to assume Gaussian, uh, that, uh, that is our assumption. 
if they are not single Gaussian, uh, then you can have a multiple Gaussian, uh, then again, you could fuse them to get an equivalent Gaussian. So those are already there by Gaussian, uh, uh, expect, by expectation maximization by Gaussian mixture model. So now the scenario enforcement algorithms will generate uh, operation of scenarios. Uh, I mean, and then what do you do intelligently pick a handful of the scenarios which should be able to cover the entire space. So that's like, you know, in a three dimensional space, if you choose a basis vector uh, like 100, zero, zero, and 010 zero, zero, and 001, zero, zero, then you cover the entire three dimensional space. So similarly, for this um, problem, we'll have millions of say, scenarios. So we need to pick a handful number of scenarios, which will be able to uh, capture the space as much as possible. So that is called scenario um, say selection uh, criteria uh, that we do. And there are some method uh, available in the literature. So now putting actually that scenario um, enforcement algorithms uh, into action. So this is how I do start initialize solution step by step best case scenario far from the whole bar, uh, you know, the uh, control. This is normally you could do this uh, current injection based solution of the power flow. So that gives you the tap position and capacitor locations. And then ABC is what? ABC, this is the relationship of the reactive power of the DG with respect to its real power. So there is this. So these are the thing uh, that you get now from your uh, first base case, a deterministic one. Then with this tap and B and etc., you can put the Y bus matrix factorize this I, I is equal to YV type of thing. So then uh, based on current injection vector, you can then obtain your voltage uh, from this new Y bar. So that is there. And then what we need to do, we need to add to this, uh, the initial uh, say the best case scenario, a lot of forecast errors. So add the forecast error, generate plenty of scenarios, adding with the, uh, the basics, and then putting all this together, check the security constant violation criteria. That is, you got your voltage solutions, added the forecast error, put the scenarios for the P, et cetera, and then see what the uh, voltage you get. Now, if you violate some of the scenarios, that is the voltage is not within the range, that is the check. The number of violated scenarios, if it is, nil, then you have covered all the scenarios. But if it is not, then see how many scenarios have been violated. Typically, if you choose, say, about 25,000 scenarios, you may find about 2,000, 3,000 scenarios are violated, typically. Now, you cannot consider all each of the scenarios there. So then you need to have a reduction of the scenarios by scenario reduction technique, which is not we have done, but it is available in the literature. Now add those scenarios to the solution scenario set. That is, that means each of these, uh, you know, the scenario that uh, the P injection, Q injection, and the uh, uh, the um, uh, the conic constant P square plus Q square less than or equal to L I J U J. Each of those three becomes an additional constant. So depending on the number of scenarios you have chosen, your constant uh, dimensions keeps on increasing, and then you come with a new AJ, BJ, CJ, TIJ, DCJ, and go back to this, again, form your Y bus, LU factorize Y bus, and find again the V. Once you find the V, and again, add this forecast, forecast error on this forecast as the scenario, whatever solution you have done, and then see that if those voltages are maintained. So what will happen after one loop, you would be able to see that here, uh, there will be drop in the number of scenarios which have been violated. In the first pass, if it was 2,500, then you will see after this AJ, BJ, CJ, you will have about 25. The second pass, you will find about four or five. So, but the price that you are paying, you are deviating from your optimal TIJ, BCJ, AJ, BJ, CJ, uh, which you did for deterministic case. And every time you add actually this additional constant, AJ, BJ, CJ, TIJ, BCJ, they are becoming little suboptimal. 
So that is a chance constant. So that's how it is. Perform deterministic bold bar control, basic schedule, check violated scenarios, uh, then reduce those set of the violated scenarios into couple of things, add most dominant scenarios to the program, run the scenario based chance constant VVC again, and then improve the schedule and then do this. So this is how it goes. That's the, you know, the uh, uh, difficult part of that, uh, the, 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 the computational part of that. So how we do this two stage, first is the optimization window, like say we have every hour. Now we know the mechanical uh, voltage control options are the caps and the capacitor. We don't need to touch them in the big, uh, whatever we get in the beginning of the hour for the whole hour, because if you keep on moving them, so they, they you know, you lose the, their life expectancy. So in the beginning of the hour, you do all this optimization, you got actually the hourly forecast of the uh, solar or wind and from the hourly forecast, you also have the forecast error uh, distributions. And then that error you have uh, you know, modeled as Gaussians. Now from that error, you have generated loads of scenarios and it makes sure that you are only adjusting AJ, BJ, CJ of that uh, QDJ and TIJ, BCJ, once they are done in the beginning, they are fixed. And throughout the hour, as the output from the solar P is varying, Q in, at Q itself is adjusting with this formula. This A, B, and C that you have computed in the beginning of this. So in the beginning of this, you have computed A, B, C, T, I, J, B, C, J. So don't touch T, I, J, B, C, J. Keep A, B, C fixed for the whole hour. But as the P is moving, because you have captured the forecast error, so it is always giving you this, this program is giving you a Q, which is really a very optimal one. And that is how the Q output of the Q would vary. So that is the second stage control. And that is continuous, and, but this is every hour once. So that's the uh, two stage uh, optimization process. Sorry, yeah. So now I show you the voltage violation probability. It is the fraction of the total known voltage violation across all the uh, Monte Carlo trials. So what you see that voltage violation probability is number of voltage, number of node voltage violated for each of the Monte Carlo uh, scenario, sum over all the Monte Carlo scenario divided by number of Monte Carlo scenario into number of node. So Theoretically, if all the node voltage are violated for each scenario, you will have total violation number of this. So that is the denominator. And then this is for each scenario, you have this NBVI is the number of violated scenarios for all Monte Carlo. So that is the voltage violation probability. Now blue, uh, sorry, the yellow is the deterministic and uh, green is the chance constraints. So there you see that NMC trials, NVBI, number of voltage violations, and this number of buses. So that is, if you do the deterministic and then do and don't do anything, and then uh, let the um, you know forecast error to uh, uh, vary the uh, um, influence the node voltage node voltage variation, and you see the what the percentage of the uh, uh, the percentage of the violation. Uh, on deterministic case for a base case, and then you test for all the scenario, that's the violation. Whereas if you do the chance constraint, and then you see the green, see that that height is very low. Now, what is on this side? That is there are one, two, three, four, like uh, the pillars. This is the standard deviation of the forecast error. If you let the forecast error to be, you know, uh, bad and bad like this, so this would go up and up. So this is the, uh, you know, the uh, effectiveness of this chance constant process. Now we come to the switching count of the discrete controller. Like I said to you that you have the option of multi-objective W1 into expectation of the P loss, W2 into the uh, absolute value of the uh, T uh, mean, uh, uh, Ti to T min, right? The deviation, the tap, tap uh, movements. Now, if we, 
use W2 to be zero and W1 to be one. That is, if we focus completely on loss optimization, you see there are about 23 uh, violation of the uh, movement of the taps. Now, if we take 25% um, weightage to that, uh, that means if we bring that into that objective function with 25% priority, then you see that the number of tap uh, movement uh, within that is now less, within an hour, say, is less. Within an optimization window is less, it's about 18. Now, if we go to, say, 50%, then you see that it is even less. So that means it depends what you want to optimize or prioritize. Is it the uh, movement of your uh, tap and capacitor switch position, mechanical switch position throughout the hour, or it is the um, loss uh, minimization? So if you, in order to uh, preserve the operating life of the taps, naturally we need to put W to high value, then there could be less, but then we have a little bit more loss. Uh, let me see this, yes. That's the, for, for different network, we did this um, losses for chance constant as against the deterministic cases. So this is what you see uh, that with forecast uh, error standard deviation increasing, and you see that this is the uh, loss, expected value of power loss corresponding to chance constant value, PLCC. PLDC is expected value of power loss corresponding to the deterministic schedule. So PLDC would always be less, PLCC will be more. So that's why, you know, this uh, PL, that is a positive thing and it is having about 4% more loss. If the, normally the loss is a four to 5% TND loss, so now with a chance constant, 4% of the 4% is about 0.16% uh, uh, conservativeness is here uh, uh, with this uh, chance constant. Now that is the last slide, that is the last slide, the technical slide, but uh, this is my team. I just wanted to show you that they all do the work and I do the talk. So I wanted to bring it to your attention that this is not the only area that I work that as Fata initially mentioned, uh, we got control, we got modeling, we got monitoring, and we got estimation. That's Firdosh. Uh, he's uh, from uh, NIT Srinagar and doing PhD and now postdoc with me. So it is his work. And all the other people, they do uh, similar type of work in other topic. And each of their work can be, you know, the uh, content of one hour talk like this, like Jerome, he worked on microgrid protections. Uh, in end of June, he finished. Now he has gone to MIT. Uh, for three years postdoc, and, uh, and this person status is working on grid forming converters and solar. Uh, Shomia is working on uh, wind farm uh, control, uh, facility based control. Adeyami is working on wind farm model simplification. So like that, uh, that that is how my team is set up. Uh, Fata mentioned about a couple of books. That is the those are the four books, and uh, we have always worked with funding from people. Um, this work came from uh, National Grid, EPSRC. And uh, now with also UK Power Network, we worked on transmission control from, with funding from ABB, FinGrid, EON. Also, I got involved with United Nations for the CDM, uh, this methodological panel, GE for wind, and uh, now, European Research Council, uh, we have all those Mary Curie uh, work. Right now, I mean, there are four Mary Curie scholar at this point of time with me. And from November, there'll be two more, so six Mary Curie scholar would be working. Uh, some of you who are here uh, have done PhD um, and then want to do uh, postdoc under Mary Curie. Uh, it is open until 8th of September. You could write, develop a proposal, and then we will cost it, and then we will submit. That's a very, uh, you know, open uh, global sort of program. Anybody can apply uh, to any place, and there is no limit or quota for any universities or any country. And so that's uh, one can do. That's how all the medical scholars are with me. That's a um, European uh, Council money. <laughs>